Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Hampstead School Board meeting um, for Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. Um, Melissa, will you please call the roll and then I'll read the statement. Megan Malcolm. Here. Caitlin Parnell. Here. David Smith. Here. Jim Sweeney. Jim Sweeney, I didn't hear you. I can't hear him, I'm not picking up on audio, but I do see him, so I'm going to mark him as being here, if that's okay. Thumbs up, Jim. Yep, he did, yep. Okay, thank you. And Karen Yusenka. Here. And also in attendance at the virtual board table is Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Earl Metzler. Thank you, Melissa. I do want to read a statement in regards to our Zoom meeting that we'll be using going forward. As chair of the Hampstead School Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are, one, providing public access to the meeting by telephone. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting by dialing the following phone numbers, 888-475-4499 or 877-853-5257. Number two, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing this meeting, including how to access the meeting using Zoom, telephonetically. Instructions have also been provided to the, on the district website at hampsteadschools.net. Number three, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anyone has a problem, please email hmstechnology at hampsteadschools.net. Four, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Thank you. Um, so going to our regular meeting. Now we have two sets of meeting minutes in our packets tonight. We have the reorganizational meeting minutes of April 7th, 2020. And then additionally, we have the regular meeting minutes from April 7th, 2020. I can have a motion to approve and we can review. So moved. I have a second. Second. Thank you. We'll take a moment to review. And then if there are any, is any discussion, we can have that now. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Melissa, will you please call the roll vote? Sorry. Yes. Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Okay, I see a thumbs up sign from Mr. Sweeney. So that's a yes. Mrs. Yasenka. Yes. A hey, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, sorry, uh, Mr. Sweeney needs to dial in. So I'm just locating the phone number for him. Caitlin, I've, I've provided that for him, so I hope okay. you can see it. Okay, he's got, okay, we'll keep going then. <laughs> this is gonna be a real good excuse, Jim, about why you don't need a liaison assignment. We won't be able to hear you speak up. <laughs> okay, um, so under current business, we do need to do committee liaison assignments. This isn't something that we need to vote on, but we do need to um, have people volunteer or I can assign them, that's fine too. So as a review, the liaison assignments that we're looking at is for, um, we have facilities, special needs, technology, policy committee, that would be two members typically, um, HMS, regular education and curriculum, HCS, regular education and curriculum, vouchers, and safety committee. Um, I'm just gonna go down the list, I feel like that's easier. Anybody want to step forward for facilities? Last year, uh, David, you were facilities. So uh, I don't know if anyone else wants that in particular, or David, if you'd like to keep it. Um, that's up to anybody. If, if nobody else wants it, I'll keep it. Anybody have a strong desire for facilities? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So David, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Um, David, you also had special education last year. Yep. Anybody else want to step forward for that? And just a reminder, no one's going to be insulted if somebody does have an interest in it um, and, wa and wants to do that. All right, David. <laughs> you can keep that one too. Oh, I, can, I can take one of them so he can um, be on a different committee. Um, all right. All right. Megan goes to special education. Uh, technology. Jim, I know we can't hear you yet, but do you want, you want, do you want to keep technology? Okay. We're going to give that to Jim. Okay. Policy committee. Um, we need two members. Karen, you had it this past year, and then we have an empty seat. Um, yeah, I'll keep that. Anybody else want policy? I can jump on that one. If that, unless anybody else wants it. Okay. I'll do policy. Okay, um, HMS. Um, I have, I've had it. Um, I'd like to keep it unless somebody else wants it, then I'm happy to switch around. Jim, did you say, I can't hear you. Sorry, Jim. Do you want it? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll give that one. Um, next is Central School. Yeah, I've had that uh, five years, so I, I will keep that. You want to keep that? Somebody okay. Yes, really wants it. That, if someone wants it, that's fine. Megan, I saw you raise your hand. Uh, that's okay. If she, that's okay. You sure? Yep. You can have it if you want it. I'm gonna Megan. make you guys flip a coin. Yeah. No. Okay. Are we sticking with Karen then? Okay. Okay. Um, next up is vouchers. Jim, you've had vouchers. Um, you want to keep that? Sure. He said, I think he's saying sure. He's indicating with a thumbs up. I feel like I should say that for anyone on the phone. Um, okay. Next up is safety committee. I have been on that the past year. That's kind of been rotating though. Um, so safety committee, Megan, cause I just really, you know, you don't, totally know what all these are. I know we talked briefly. Safety committee meets four times a year. Um, and it's a, a group of administrators, um, our SRO, it has uh, members of fire and rescue. Um, and it 
it's dealing with safety issues within the district. Um, I don't know if anybody okay, sorry, else. I continue. You want to take that one, Megan? Sure. Okay. I have a question for um, Dr. Metzler, if I may. Of course. Is the um, the character or the content of the safety committee going to change at all in light of um, the pandemic? Well, we certainly could take a look at that. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to necessarily from a Hampstead school district perspective, but um, if we're looking at it as from the, the town of Hampstead's perspective, we, we may, but you know, the town is very well represented there as well. So I think we're in good shape. Okay, just asking. Okay, um, and since Megan generously offered, uh, volunteered last meeting for the New Hampshire School Board Association um, delegate position, that is all of the liaison assignments that we need to do. So that is done. Um, so next up we have SAU 55 reorganization planning. So Dr. Metzler, I know you're gonna to speak to this as well. Um, for everyone, we have in our packets kind of a, a draft timeline that we're looking at. Um, for the public, we do have some preliminary plans um, that we are looking at and we'll be looking um, ideally really in the next month to start putting those out publicly um, and taking votes on them publicly. Right now, um, the documents that we're working on are work products, so we're not ready to fully release those yet, although the, the timeline, um, I believe, is, is a public document at this point. Um, so just for our members, so you know, so Dr. Metzler is going to speak to this. Um, I'm actually also going to need to ask for a vote on a few things. Well, actually, just I think just a vote on one. And then we'll, we will be having a non-public tonight for, to give the all board members a chance to ask more detailed questions um, about, about this current proposal. And actually, Dr. Metzler, before you talk, speak to this, I would like to first um, do the vote that I'm looking for. So I sent today a reminder email to all of our school board members about the negotiation terms that we've been working on with Timberlane um, to negotiate how we're gonna move forward and how the um, official split is going to happen. So you've all had a chance to look at those. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of back and forth last week, um, but now we do actually have to officially accept those negotiation terms um, so that then we can keep moving forward with this process. So I would be looking for a motion to accept the negotiation terms for mediation between the Hampstead School District and the Timberlane School District regarding SAU 55 withdrawal. So moved. I have a second? Second. I have a second. Um, any discussion or questions on the negotiation piece? Okay, um, Melissa, will you please um, call the roll vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Give a thumbs up, Jim. There he is. Okay. I see the thumbs up indication from Mr. Sweeney. I'm gonna mark him as voting yes. And Mrs. Yasenka. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. And now Dr. Metzler, if you wanna to speak to this topic a bit. Excellent, well, well thank you, um, Caitlin. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. You know, first, um, first I'd like to say, you know, I, it's important for both districts to understand, um, you know, that we're working at this. We're working on this together. Um, I can say, and I, I don't feel like I'm um, talking out of turn here because I, I need to represent both districts while we're doing this. Um, working with the SAU chair and vice chair, we've had some some excellent conversations about, you know, what the transition year will look like, what staffing looks like. You know, we do have 
um, some staffing changes that potentially could happen in the SAU during the um, transition year. So we have some retirements and people leaving for different reasons. So we have um, some flexibility there. So looking at, um, at Hampstead's plan and, and what SAU 55 will look like um, when it's you know, just Hampstead and, uh, and Timberlane when they have their own um, SAU or, or their own um, central office, uh, we're, we're keeping that in mind as, as we look at personnel. So, um, and we're looking at what the jobs will look like through the 2021 school year um, before we hit that magic date of July 1, um, 2021, where we are standalone um, central offices and standalone SAUs and standalone districts. So um, I can say that those, those conversations have been excellent. Uh, I think people are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of what it could look like and, and this could be smooth and, and that further, um, you know, it, it's, it's even a little bit better now because you, you now have agreed to the terms in terms of the mediation. So you'll be at the table together to, to figure out um, the rest of the information, you know, how we figure all that out. We are looking at um, making sure that we get, um, that, trying to get those audits done very hard now because of the, um, the pandemic and the, and the situation we're in, but a final audit so that numbers are clear um, and that both districts feel like they have adequate support um, in their central office and they're able to deliver the superintendent services in a way in both districts. So um, I can say I'm not, I'm not concerned about this transition year. I think we're in good shape. Um, you know, Jeff is on the line as well. I think uh, hopefully you can unmute him at some point here, Mike, and he'll have an opportunity to jump in. So what you have in your packets, uh, which we considered, um, and you refer to it as work product. This, so work product is something until it's actually uh, uh, something we can share with the public, it, it, it remains, um, you know, pretty much a confidential document until such time the board um, decides it's a, a document that will be released. So um, you referred to a timeline. So we have a, a pretty, a pretty, I think, you know, it's a measured, well thought out timeline. Um, we investigate a lot of different models, uh, try to come back to the board with what we think would be an excellent model for Hampstead. Um, you know, Timberlane will be doing the same thing on their own and coming up with models that will serve those particular districts. You know, the districts are very different. They're different in size. Um, they might be different in terms of goals. It might be different in terms of strategic plans. So all that needs to be taken into consideration when you're putting together a central office as well as the skill set of the particular people that you may have under contract or on board um, for the foreseeable future. And, and certainly when openings come up, you, you, you readjust. So our organizational chart that we've presented to you um, takes all those th things into consideration, the timeline into consideration, uh, how we can keep things moving. Uh, part of your document, as you, as you see, we'll have job descriptions. We're making sure that all of the services are covered. Uh, we wanna make sure that we continue to do a good job and and basically a seamless transition really for both districts into, into their, own, um, you know, their own identity, if you will, and uh, moving forward with two central offices. So I can't answer questions. I certainly have Jeff that also, um, he spent a good part of the weekend. Um, we were back and forth uh, all weekend, Zoom, text, calls, uh, to try to get this um, you know, to, to be a document that we felt was, was presentable, which, which it is. And, um, so there you go. So if Jeff, if, I don't know, if Jeff, if you had some things that you would like to add, if that's okay, Caitlin, uh, he did spend a lot of time yeah. working with me directly on this. Uh, so it would be um, also great if he could make a few comments. So Jeff, you there? Well, yep. Thank you, Dr. Messler. I think the, uh, the big thing here is that the uh, timeline, I've looked at the things that from my perspective would need to be um, done and accomplished. And I've combined that with the list that attorney Eggert had, uh, had proposed. And I think between the two of them, and the general needs that we have, that's, that really represents what's in, the, what's in the timeline we have. So I can certainly address anything, any questions you may have specific to that timeline or any, anything that you may feel needs to be added um, to supplement that. But you can see that the work really starts really right away. But we have a good, a good plan and some time to, to get through this. Absolutely. Um, so if members have any questions regarding the timeline portion, I think we, we would be good to ask those now. If you have specific questions about the more extensive document that we've been looking at, I'd like to save those for non-public just because there, there's some lines here that I just want to be careful of um, regarding personnel and everything else. So um, if anyone has questions or comments or anything about the timeline that we've talked about, um, please feel free to ask them now. Okay, I guess not. 
that's fine. So we'll, again, we'll be going into um, a non-public session later to talk about this. Um, Mr. Dowd and Dr. Metzler, anything else that you want to speak to um, before we move on? I think just, uh, thank you. I, I think just in general terms, um, just for the public, you know, we looked at this, we looked at the educational side of the house and the business side of the house, and we, we put together an organizational chart, um, and we're doing this in both districts to make sure that that all those needs are met. So, um, you know, again, we 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 uh, thank you for the um, the chance to to put these this work together for you. Um, we certainly will be can go into more depth in, in non-public, but I, I just wanted the the public to know um, you now this 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 transition it will be seamless in both districts. I think um, I think we have a really good really good plans in both districts. And so I think our neighbors will be fine and we'll be fine. And, um, and we can talk more about that, uh, obviously, um, as you have more specific questions that we can address in, in non-public. So thank you, Caitlin. Okay, thank you. Next up is I know a very interesting topic to many people who may be watching or listening tonight or in the next few days. I know I personally have gotten a fair amount of questions about it um, and concerns and just people looking for some direction. So next up, we need to talk about the last day of school um, and when that will be for this school year. Um, so Dr. Metzler, again, I'm gonna let you um, speak to this about your recommendation that you're putting forward and then we can um, discuss and, and uh, most likely hold a vote for this. Excellent. Well, I think um, just, just right out of the box, um, what we're looking at, um, we looked at a number of different models and we looked at this um, across the state. Uh, many discussions were held regarding um, school vacation, which obviously we, we feel like our teachers, our students, their parents, our community all needed that break next week. So we, we wanna keep that vacation um, break in place. Um, I think um, it's a good opportunity for people to take a deep breath uh, and then we'll hit the home stretch here. Um, I, I have to say, um, before I get into the last day, you know, our teachers, our administrators, this town, um, and, and, and true in both places, but this town has really, um, really gotten behind our efforts. Our, our teachers have just been outstanding. The support staff, everybody um, has really done an excellent job. So uh, it's a well-deserved break. Um, and, and as we break, we're going to continue to look at ways to improve what we do. You know, remote learning has come a really long way, you know, um, from when we were, you know, on a Thursday afternoon into Friday, hey, we're going to start remote learning next week. You know, you have, here's a few days to figure it out and hit the ground running. So um, they've just done a really good job. So we wanna keep the vacation in place um, for those reasons. Now I had other reasons several weeks ago why I wanted to keep the vacation in place. It was keep the end of the year um, as far out as possible so we'd have an opportunity to do um, our traditional celebrations, hopefully in person. I have not abandoned that. However, um, now that we know we're in remote learning uh, for the end of the year per the governor's um, order, uh, we, we're looking at um, two different ways of, of how do we figure out, did we make enough time? Did we do enough work? Um, we're count, we, so we counted hours. So in New Hampshire, it's not necessarily just school days. You also have an opportunity to count hours. Um, sure, we'd love to get that many days in person, but it's not going to happen. Um, so I asked Mike Flynn and, and company to kind of, you know, add, count up all the minutes, count up all the hours, um, subtract time that wouldn't be appropriate, add time that was appropriate, whatever, and come up with, uh, the number. And so at the elementary level and the middle school level, we've exceeded the state minimum for the number of hours um, as of May 29th. So our recommendation would be to make May 29th the last day for students. Um, we'd also have teachers under contract for, for, for days afterwards, you know, several weeks, um, and to use that time to look at several things. One is to wrap up the year, uh, work on our end of the year activities kind of planning, um, which we'll be planning through the month of, of May, but really more execution. Also to think about what if, you know, what if um, a resurgence, what if in the fall, um, we want to continue to build on remote learning and, um, you know, you know, there are different additional skills and professional development and different strategies that we would like to employ to make it better in the event that we're, um, our hand is forced and we have to do that. Uh, of course, we're all hoping for um, a traditional opening and, we're all hoping that we're going to be able to do some of these year-end celebrations um, in person, but in the event that we can't. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later in terms of how we went about getting information to, to plan. But for now, on this particular item, I'd like to keep the school vacation in place, and I'd like to uh, ask the board to 
amend the school calendar to make May 29th the last day of school for students. I am going to, we can talk about it, but I'd like to ask for a motion first to set the last day of the 2019-2020, sorry, um, school year as May 29th, 2020. So motion. Second. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion or questions from any board members? I have a question uh, just out of curiosity. Does a remote day count? Um, is it equivalent to a day in the school? Uh, excellent question, Megan. That was one of the questions I had asked um, Mike Flynn to really research at the Department of Ed. And, and um, so that was part of coming up with a calculation. Um, it's not entirely a one for one, but we counted the time of instruction. So we were able to get over it. it for all, I guess the short answer is the days count. What do they count for? We just wanted to make sure that we had enough hours in, in totality, which we do. Um, it's, it's, we were over a thousand, which is, which is pretty good. The, the number is in the, uh, I think 994 or nine, Mike, jump in, Mike, 945 for elementary, 990? Yep, 990 for 7 through 12 and 945 for K to 6. So that was to take into consideration um, days that we missed that we didn't make up. Those, those obviously were subtracted. Um, the blizzard bag days count. And then we had release time and all that. So, and then looking at these remote days of instruction, which uh, according to the department, they, they do count. But we looked at hours of instruction. So, Ms. David, uh, my, my question is around, is this something, I know we've talked to, you know, this past year during negotiations, we talked about um, looking at hours versus days. Do you think that this is something that we should be looking at and considering even more going into next year? Uh, another great question. I, you know, this is like, you know, cat's out of the bag. You know, I, I think it's important that when we can use um, blizzard bags, you know, it's a good idea. Obviously, we, we want to try to get the you know, that 180 days in one way or another. And, and so it's about the continuity of learning and it's right. about kind of keeping that consistency. And I don't, I don't want to just conveniently can't, you know, start canceling school days and counting hours because we do more hours than we need to. Um, quite frankly, if we were to do, you know, you can do the math, you do how many hours we're on the building times 180 days and, and we're well into, um, you know, two or three weeks uh, past what the minimum standards are. I want to, I just want to focus on those two words, minimum standards, you know, neither district, Hampstead, especially has never, you know, talked about minimum standards. You know, we've always gone above and beyond. And I think in everything that you do, um, your safety and security above and beyond, you know, what our teachers do, what our students do athletically, artistically, um, academically. So I, I, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to start doing that. We've done it before. If we have an orphan day, meaning like school is going to end on a Monday. Um, and so we, we may, we may not come back for that Monday and end on the Friday. Um, that that's a good practice, but I, I don't know if we want to roll back two or three weeks of school just because we've done the time. I, I don't know if that's a recommendation. I know that's not a recommendation I would make. So, but we are doing that now, right? If we're going to end early. We are doing that now primarily because of the situation that we're in. I'm, I'm saying moving forward, everything being equal. I mean, I, you know, if we could get into the buildings, I would not be making this recommendation. I can tell you that. I just think, I know what we're doing online remotely is more work for teachers. I know it's more work for students. I know it's more work for parents. I know it's more work for the community. And I think, um, you know, I, I think we get to that end of May. I think, I, I think that's about as good as we're going to get out of this remote learning experience uh, this spring. Um, if, I, if I thought staying two more weeks in remote learning was going to be of some great value, I would make that recommendation. But I think uh, from a practical standpoint for families and the students and the staff, in addition to getting some additional time to plan with staff for all the things we need to plan for, which are which is too many to list, you know, as far as the end of this year and the beginning of next year, I think it's some good time for professional development to enhance our remote learning experience. What day would we have been getting out this year if this wasn't happening, Dr. Metzler? Uh, uh, I believe we were in, and Mike jump in here, I believe we were in mid-June, June. Is it around the 18th? June, June 18th with the one snow day that we had. OK. 
Okay, anyone else have any questions before we vote? Okay, Melissa, can you please call the roll call vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Yasenka? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. So for everyone who's been wondering, our official last day of school is now Friday, May 29th, 2020 for the students. Excellent. Melissa, if you could, um, with Kathy Belcher, or, or get a message out, get that notice out tomorrow by posting. Um, we sent something similar out last week um, after Timberlane had uh, decided their last day. Okay? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about end of year activities for this year. Um, the district's been doing a fair amount of work reaching out to both some students and um, families to determine what they would like to do um, if we're in an ideal situation. Um, so Dr. Metzler, I'm going to turn this over to you to talk about. Excellent. Um, this is such a, a difficult um, format. You know, I, I want to make sure that I'm providing enough information, but I don't want to over talk or over communicate a particular issue. So um, we'll, we'll do the best we can with this. So, you know, we are, we're hoping, uh, all right, so, so the governor will come back and, and hopefully in early May, we'll, we'll be definite, we'll get a definite answer on um, what the month of June will look like and potentially even July, I think, um, whether or not New Hampshire opens up a little bit or not. And that will provide us different opportunities for year-end activities, celebrations, you know, kindergarten transition, four to five, eight to high school, those sorts of things. Um, we were having discussions, and I, I don't want to go too far into the into discussions, but we um, we talked a lot about, you know, what does the community want? What does the school board want? What do the kids want? They're part of the community, of course. You know, what's good for staff? What's good for kids? And um, we use this tool that we use internally for professional development, and we use it for the first time reaching out to the community. And so anybody listening, and some of you obviously with children, um, got a chance, um, the tool is called Thought Exchange. And, and what Thought Exchange does is it gives us an opportunity for people really to you know, exchange you know, um, thoughts and, and, and rate them and, and kind of get a, a finger on the pulse about what the community is thinking. And so we were asking those questions. What, what would the year end look like? What's important to you? Eighth grade graduation, semi-formals, four to five, you know, kindergarten, um, screenings, all these kinds of things. So there's, there's an awful lot of work. There's also, um, we're sensitive to the fact that we realized from March through the end of May, which was the, you know, the back end of our year, um, we have to look a lot at transition uh, with teams, grades three and four meeting and deciding, you know, what kind of, um, what kind of curriculum adjustments need to be made in the fall to make sure that however we ended in whatever grade that the, that the, the next grade that's receiving them, that those students are ready for that grade. You know, traditionally in a lot of districts that, um, that have what they call a summer slide, you know, you, you miss July and August and, and kids lose quite a bit of uh, comprehension or, or other skills, math, science, uh, et cetera. Um, we, we, we typically, um, we don't have those kinds of slides here, you know, and it's has a lot to do with, with the parents, has a lot to do with the home, has a lot to do with the community, um, trying to keep that learning going all 12 months, even though they're out of school. So I think that that's something, um, you know, as we looked at our thought exchange, and I'm going to turn this over to Mike and have him share his screen, and you get an opportunity to really see what thought exchange looks like, uh, how, they, um, how we go about getting that information, sharing it with administrators, and then triangulating it with, with the board's thoughts and asking you to support our recommendations. So, Mike, let's just jump right in now and talk about um, what we had. Just give me one more second. I, I was just what um, we also extended this to students for the first time ever. Our eighth grade uh, students are actually participating. We made some value judgments, which is some decisions today. You know, how young is too young for kids to be participating in an activity like this? And we thought. Let's try it with the eighth grade and see. We had already asked the eighth grade parents how they felt and other parents, other community members, um, you may or may not uh, have had a chance. So I'm gonna ask Mike to walk you through this. Um, he did a nice job today with H team and uh, uh, I'm asking for a similar presentation, short, but it'll give you a good idea about um, where we are with this. So Mike, go ahead. Great, um, can I just have a thumbs up that you can see Thought Exchange to make sure that we're working right? All right, great. 
Um, as Dr. Metzger said, uh, we were pretty excited not to go techie or geeky on you uh, to release this to the public, um, but we had used it internally a couple times in regards to professional development, as you mentioned. So again, not to waste too much time here, what ends up happening to give people that may not have participated in uh, the thought exchanges, you'll, you'll, you'll get an email from the district asking you to participate in, in whatever the thought of the question was, and you can see it currently right here. It said, <clears throat> What activities slash events do you believe will make a successful closure for the end of the school year? And so what, what you can do is uh, you can post what you think, and I'll show you in a second. And then after you post your thought or, your, or you share your thought out, then you'll see what other people have posted and what their thoughts were. And you can rank them from one to five on what you feel was, you know, depending on the question, whether you felt it was relative, relevant, not relevant, um, so forth and so on. So um, I'm gonna show you just a few things before I move it back is is this is the actual thought exchange cloud so to speak so this is the artificial intelligence that does its work so what ends up happening here all those purple dots are humans that are participating in the current thought exchange each blue bubble is a thought that someone posts and then each line connected is someone actually ranking that thought now i made fun of dr metzer earlier uh, today when i was presenting but if you check out this person right here you can see that uh, I think Dr. Metzler was pretty active during the day, making sure that he was participating throughout. So what I'm gonna do here, this is in normal time and, and we held the window open for over 24 hours. I'm gonna go ahead and just speed it up real quick so we can get through it to up time, uh, over 50 times uh, the speed. You can start to see the community that's interacting uh, with all the thoughts. They go out, they come in, they come back and, and they rate all those thoughts. And then once this exchange is closed, um, we get the results. So. I'm gonna go ahead and just briefly show you a couple things that it does that helps us internally determine what was going on. So I'm gonna to go to, excuse me one second, a bar graph, which is pretty simple for everyone to, to read. So what the artificial intelligence does, because people can type in a sentence several different ways, what it does is any computer is grabs common terms. Um, so a couple of the popular common terms, uh, making sure that, that that we meet summer learning, extended school year services, fourth grade move up transition, eighth grade graduation was important to a lot of people. And again, not to go geeky on you, but if I click on year end parade, it'll go down into the details and go a little bit deeper that I don't, we don't really need to go down to tonight. Uh, it also <clears throat> breaks it into a heat map, which is pretty cool. So it, it goes with how many people actually participated in it and, and what their ranking, the average ranking was. It doesn't discount anything as it goes all the way down to something as a slideshow picture video. So five total thoughts were, were, were brought in on that, 73 people rated it. It, it rose to the top as a 3.1 uh, and it showed where it was. So we can go further into it uh, internally, but it, it shows you especially that, um, you know, we're, we're taking the communities, uh, um, uh, we're soliciting information, which is important. You know, you can go into word clouds and simple stuff. So. Uh, it was, I was nervous. Um, it's always nervous when you send it out uh, to the public, but as you can see, 199 people uh, posted a thought, <clears throat> excuse me, participated, 137 thoughts, and then over 4,000 rankings. So uh, very valuable data that we're gonna take back, as Dr. Messer mentioned, about determining how we um, design the year-end uh, activities here. So I will stop share and turn it back to Dr. Messer. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Um, I want you to, uh, so what our plan is really for the next meeting, the May 12th meeting is really to have some idea. We're hoping that we'll know from the governor and come back to you with like um, what the end of the year will look like. I know um, Principal Danola and Principal Collins, their teams uh, are all working on um, different options just in case. So if we can't do things in person, this is what they might look like. If we can do, uh, be really creative, but I think, um, you know, they're, they're both really creative teams. And so I'm, uh, I think we're going to be able to put together a really nice end of the year for, for our students, work on all those transitions, certainly work with those teams, make sure that curriculum lines up. Um, and that's all, that's all the work that will be going on, you know, administratively probably over the next, you know, two to three weeks. So hopefully by that May 12th meeting, we'll have a list of year-end events and exactly what they look like for you uh, to take a look at. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to geek out too much over the thought exchange, but I think it's pretty cool. And I think it's a, it's a nice way to let everybody participate, especially in this strange situation that we're all in where we are 
disconnected in a lot of ways. Um, and I really do appreciate um, all of our administrators and teachers on this who are trying to find ways to make this okay for everyone. So thank you for your work on this and we look forward to hearing what you say on the 12th. Um, and we can, we'll go from there. Okay, Caitlin, just uh, one last thing on that. I just, yeah. you know, we can't, we can't make any guarantees other than the guarantee that we're going to do the very best we can um, and we're gonna wait as long as we can. We, it was very clear as to what people want and how they want it. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait and we have to be patient. We might we have to be flexible, but the guarantee we'll give is we're not going to just um, out of convenience, just wrap up the year and move on. We're gonna, our kids deserve the best and we're gonna make sure that we get, we get it for them somehow, some way. Now we have to look at deadlines. So we're looking at, you know, maybe August 1st is a deadline. Um, you know, how, how far past the 4th of July. So there's, there's some things we're gonna ask the board to really think about you know, when does an eighth grader become a ninth grader? You know, is it is eight one, you know, we get into August, are they still talking about semi-formals and graduations? Maybe they are, and maybe maybe that's something we do. Or um, is it something that we need to make firm, hard decisions uh, in May so that we can execute in June, whatever we can do. So I just wanna make that guarantee that we're gonna work as hard as we possibly can to do the very best for our kids. Um, no, no decisions will be made out of convenience. They're really going to be made out of what's in the best interest of the kids and the families that live in Hampstead. And um, so that guarantee we can make. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any um, questions or, or comments on this before we move forward? Okay. Seeing none. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the policy second reads. These are the second reads of the policies we had at our meeting on the 7th. This is policy, we have seven of them, policy ABA, BBAA, DK, DG, EBCD, EF, and JIA. Please take a minute to review and then um, I'll have a motion to approve those policies for second read. I move that we adopt the seven policies presented for second read tonight. I have a second. 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 Any comments or questions on these? Okay. Melissa, will you please call the roll vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. And Mrs. Yusenka? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next up are board comments and correspondence. Again, I'm going to go in the order I can see people. So we'll go with Jim. <laughs> Any comments? Hold on one second. I just want to look at something. Do you want me to come back to you? No, no, not at all. Okay, we can be patient. We're moving through pretty quick here, so. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, I know we're going to use the last two and a half weeks or whatever for the teachers to talk about maybe what's going to happen next year if, if this continues. I know the CDC came out today and talked about a second wave coinciding um, with the flu season. So, you know, I, I hope that, you know, if this does happen again, um, remote learning could take on a new face. And I don't know if it's Zoom or some type of um, digital blackboard where there's learning that, you know, we don't need to see into the teacher's house. Maybe the teacher doesn't need to see into our house, 
but maybe they, you know, can do some live presentations or live examples or math or English or, or whatever. I know it was pretty quick for them to, you know, hop on the gas pedal on on March 13th, and we've come a long way. But, I mean, this could come back and bite us again in the fall, and I would love to see some um, better use of Zoom or some other platform. I don't know if Google Classroom or Seesaw has that capability, but if the teachers could, you know, present not not just a slide, but, uh, I don't know, maybe that, a working document where they show the kids how to do a problem or experiment or, or something. And it's not just more of a, um, a, a, a digital blizzard bag, let's say, you know? Yeah, and I think that certainly it, it, it varies as teachers are getting used to it. I know that some of my kids actually have been doing some of the things that you've talked about, but I think you're right. I mean, the teachers, we, the whole district was kind of thrown into this, but there certainly has been indications that we may be dealing with it in the future again, so. Right, so Dr. Metzl, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I greatly appreciate what everybody's done. And if, if, if we can do something as a school board to make sure that in the future, um, you know, we're even more prepared. So if, if we could put something before the board, if we need any technology, um, you know, please make that recommendation for, for the fall. Uh, this could happen again. And, you know, if we could have uh, different type of presentations and we need better technology, let us know because I'll vote for it. Okay, Lynn, can I, can I jump in? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a great point. I think, um, you know, as you look at, um, you know, the entire state of New Hampshire and, and really the leaders really in the country in this remote learning effort, which is it's pretty, um, pretty awesome to be a part of. I think, um, you know, our teachers with um, their comfort level and professional development, you know, as Caitlin indicated, some are, it's optional, and um, our teachers typically um, exercise options to be great at what they do. Uh, they'll continue to build on those those platforms. You know, Google, I think it's called Meet now, used to be called Hangout, um, Zoom. Um, you know, there's a lot of, they're, they're using a lot of different things. So I think, uh, you know, I'll work with HEA and, and, and to their comfort level, and um, hopefully we have some time to, you know, to take a look at what we just experienced in, in June, you know, at the... Uh, and, and then how do we build moving forward? Because, um, you know, Jim's right. You know, resurgence is one thing, and um, this may not be the last time that we're in a situation like this. It may not even be um, COVID-19 related. It might be some other related. So um, I think it's important for us to plan and, and certainly be ready for the future. And I know, um, you know like I said, HEA has been awesome. And, and I, I know that we'll, uh, we'll just continue to get better at what, at what we do for remote learning for our kids. So, um, so thanks for those comments. I think what we'll plan for, Caitlin, is, is some sort of, um, well, our progress reports will, will center around remote learning, but we'll also, uh, some sort of presentation, maybe, maybe that last meeting in May, um, a remote learning kind of like, this is, this, is what we, this is where we were, this is where we are, and this is where we want to go in the future, uh, if that makes sense to you. I think that would be great if we can plan that for the, the meeting. I mean, right now we're on the 26th is our last May meeting. So if we can do that, that'd be great. Excellent. You got that, Mike? Of course. Got it. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, one more thing, Dr. Metzler. Um, has the town, or, or when do you think a decision we made about if the town will be able to do summer rec? Because I know now, you know, it's very hard. People relied on not just the school for education, but, you know, so parents would uh, go to work. And then also my summer schedule was greatly affected by my kids being able to go to the summer rec program. Um, do you think when the governor speaks coming up that he might, if he opens the state up again, do you think there's a chance that there could be summer rec or just wondering? There, there certainly can be a chance. And I know this is probably, you know, driving Angie Ingraham crazy because she's on the board here and she's, she's muted, but uh, hopefully I can do justice. You know, they're tremendous partners with us, you know, the recreation department, and obviously some people work for the school department and the recreation department like Angie, and she does a great job offering those extended year um, opportunities for our kids. So yeah, our hope is we'll be able to do that. That was really that mystery because th when the governor spoke last week, he talked a lot about the summer being remote, extended school year, summer school, those kind of things. 
But if he reopens the state, it's something I think at the town of Hampstead we're going to have to look at and say, you know, these are programs that are really important to us, but we need to be able to offer them safely. So I know that the recreation department is even looking at a virtual program for the summer in the event that they can't get access to the buildings and fields. Um, so I think that, that that, again, I think is a May 12th kind of, we'll have a better idea on May 12th. Hopefully the, the governor will let us know that first week, whether the, the state's going to loosen um, the social distancing or not. And then uh, we'll plan accordingly. But um, I have all the faith that, you know, obviously Angie and company will are planning something just in case. So there'll, there'll be something for our kids. Um, hopefully it's what we always offered. Uh, but if it is something different because of the pandemic, um, so be it. Uh, we'll, but I think those, those firm answers probably aren't, we're not going to have those till, till that May 12th meeting, I believe. Great. Thank you. I'm done now. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Um, next up that I'm looking at, uh, David, do you have any comments or questions? Yep. My only question is Dr. Metzler. Um, do you have a feeling or um, when Pinkerton may be announcing what they're going to do for year end? Well, that's a, that's a, a, a really good question too. I think um, we got, we got a communication today. And if you have a student there, I think, you know, Caitlin, you may have received something. Uh, they talked about what April vacation would look like. I know Dr. Powers was, was offering some sort of creative way to, to earn some credits. They, they shared some, um, some grading kind of changes, if you would, um, to help students. And they also indicated in that communication that they would be releasing some information soon about the year end events. You know, they talked about graduation. I know they picked a date in July as well, um, but there's a lot of events that they're, they're trying to figure out. They've held some virtually, just like, uh, you know, like the thank Miss Joseph, you know, the, our Hawk Awards. Um, they've done similar things like that with Pinkerton. Um, but uh, I think that that information probably, again, is, is going to come out shortly after April vacation. Okay. And then my only other question actually is go on grading. Um, have you and the principals or anybody looked at how students' grades are do doing with this? Uh, remote learning? Like yeah, that's a that's an ongoing discussion. So um, there's, there's two things. First of all, we, we're we keeping the grading that we're using. We're looking at um, progress reports that are more focused on remote learning. You know, obviously we just started the fourth quarter. You know, we get back from vacation. A week, you know, we're, we're into a week or two and then we're two weeks out from school. So the traditional progress reporting probably won't be so great. But I think progress reports that focus on our, our remote learning experience may be helpful and in, in where students are. So I, the last part of your question, you know, have, have students' grades suffered if I think I understand the spirit. Yeah, that's where I was heading with it. And I, I think that that's, um, that's something we got to look at the third quarter grades, see how, how they did in comparison to the beginning of the year, and then, and then take a look. Hopefully um, we'll finish strong and, and kids, will, you know, their participation rate will stay high. Um, I don't have a, an answer for you right now as to say they're the same, they're greater, they're less, but I can tell you, I can tell you this for sure. I know the teacher's um, are, are delivering their instruction and grading with a great deal of compassion, um, you know, and latitude and, and helping students. So, um, you know, I can ask Mike, you know, for May 12th, maybe we can take a look at those third quarter grades and see how they compare to uh, the first and second quarters and just see, see what kind of impact this had on the third quarter. Um, you know, as I think about your question, I'm, I'm more concerned with the fourth quarter because the right. third quarter was kind of a quasi, you know, right. remote, traditional learning quarter. This is really going to be a, a whole quarter of remote learning. You know, Pinkerton um, offered a grading structure today that I, I found, um, I found it interesting anyway. You know, kids, kids showed it to me and, you know, they figured out all the angles pretty quickly, but they, um, your third quarter grade. So let's say you had a 95 in the third quarter, as long as you pass the fourth quarter, they'll give you the third quarter grade. Meaning if you got a 70 in the fourth quarter, but you had a 95 in the third quarter, they'll give you the 95 in the fourth quarter which um, as you could probably think if, if you think of what I'm, if you listen to what I'm saying, kids figured out the, the angles pretty quickly, but I think it's, um, it's that kind of compassion. I think that teachers are looking at, this is a, a really unique situation. Our kids have been asked to do, you know, some kids thrive in this remote learning uh, atmosphere and some don't. And so they're just trying to be fair to make sure that everybody, um, you know, has a fair shot and it doesn't have a real negative impact on them um, as long as they're, you know, they're participating and doing a good job. So, we can do that research and, and, and come back to you and see what kind of impact. But um, again, I think that might be more powerful in one of our June meetings too, because looking at the fourth quarter to the third quarter to the beginning, first half of the year um, may be helpful. We also want to look at our iReady scores and those sorts of things, especially when we get back in the fall, as I talked to you earlier a little bit about that summer slide. This is a, this is a, lot, this is a lot longer than a summer slide. You know, we're talking from March 
you know, all the way to September. So it's, 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 it's a pretty long period of time um, to not have any, you know, traditional face-to-face -face school. You know, this is not a replacement model. This is an emergency model. Right. Um, I don't believe that this is um, as good or, or better than what we traditionally do. I, I, I believe we're doing the best we can under the circumstances. So um, I share your concerns and we're certainly interested. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out and, and take a look at it at our next couple of meetings. Okay. One in, one in May and then one at the end of the year. Okay. No, thank you. I was just curious. Maybe they are, the grades are, you know, um, going higher. Just wasn't sure how, you know, students are receiving this and how they're responding to it. Thank, thank you. Good point. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, Karen, do you have any? Yeah, well, first, I just want to thank everyone also with the remote learning, everyone who's been involved with this from our leadership teams, from the superintendent, our teachers, all the staff, and the parents who have been diligently uh, working with this, even though it has been an inconvenience for some, um, and that they understand how important it is that we do this and that we keep our kids safe and keep them at home as long as we have to. So I wanted to say thank you on that note. And then second, um, as all of you did, we, we attended our April 15th SAU 55 reorganizational meeting. Um, and I just wanted to make a few notes on that publicly. Uh, so especially people here in Hampstead are aware of certain things that have gone on moving forward. Um, I'm not really surprised, but I was a little disappointed in, in the tone of that meeting. I thought that in the middle of a pandemic that where everyone is trying to work together and get things done in a, a collegial fashion, uh, I was disappointed to see that that did not happen at this meeting. Um, once again, Hampstead does not have a seat at the table. Um, Brian Boyle from Atkinson was voted in as the chair and Lee Doobie was voted in from Sandown as the vice chair. Even though we did put forth um, a Hampstead member for, for both the chair and the vice chair, uh, we were denied a leadership seat this time. Um, and I thought that that was disappointing, especially in a transitional year uh, where our efforts should be kind of working together um, to achieve the best possible results for both of our respective districts and for our students. The other thing that happened was weighted voting is still going to continue. I know it was our hope that that wouldn't happen during the transitional period. Um, but Danville's Sean O'Neill immediately demanded weight in voting for the entire evening, um, including approval of the minutes, which I've always found strange. Um, because of weighted voting, uh, the issue came up about the release of the right to know law. Um, I, I just want people to know how that vote went and how it came down because of weighted voting. Um, there was a motion uh, from the Timberlane member to um, keep the report held confidential by Dr. Farah and not to release it to board members or to the public. Uh, when a vote was taken um, on Timberlane, there was one abstention and one no vote. In Hampstead, three of our members abstained and two of us actually left the meeting on advice of council. So the final vote in a regular voting system, democratic system was 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, without weighted voting, that would be a tie. And when there's a tie, uh, that motion would have failed. But because of weighted voting and all the um, calculations, according to Dr. Farah, um, that that wasn't that was that didn't happen either so that report by a vote of timberlane basically with weighted voting is still being withheld from the public um so i just wanted some people you know our people to know that and reiterate that and just say that i think it's um disappointing uh, it was my hope as i know it was the hope of all of our members that this transition year would be one of working together uh to achieve the best possible results for our districts and our kids. But after um, April 15th, um, it's clear to me that that's really not gonna happen. So that's 
That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Megan, do you have any comments? I don't have anything to add. Okay. Um, I guess that leaves me. Um, Karen covered the SAU meeting. Um, I do just want to add to that, you know, we, the, the judge did rule in our favor that they were supposed to release that to us. Um, and we, that, that date has come and gone. Obviously they voted last week um, to continue to fight against um, bringing that report public or, or giving it to Hampstead members at all. Um, so our attorneys are working on that now. Um, they have, I guess technically the SAU board has, um, their attorney has moved to um, a reconsideration, asking the, the judge to reconsider. And then we assume um, if that is not to be granted that they will be moving to an appeal. So we're working on that um, through our attorneys. And I think that's it. I don't have anything else. Um, for Could I say one more thing? What? Say one more thing? Yeah. I just wanted, um, I said it last week, uh, last time, I'll say it again. I have two things to say. Um, the birthday parade that goes around the town, I greatly appreciate people doing that for all the birthdays in Hampstead and creating that parade. And the parade that happened, uh, I personally went to the Central School Parade because my two children at the Central School. Um, we decorated our car. Um, the teachers and every uh, the employees of the Central School that were around the school, uh, for some people, was very emotional. Uh, the kids really enjoyed it to see their teachers and to see all the signs and people waving, and it was really fantastic. It was a great, great um, representation of what we do in Hampstead and how uh, the people come out to acknowledge the schools and the school acknowledge the kids. It was really fantastic. Um, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Agreed. I'll add on to that. I went to the middle school, and then I watched the middle school video of the parade, and I would just like to thank Mrs. Joseph for that very sad song in the middle of it that had me crying with my children. <laughs> but it was lovely. And I know she's here, so I can see she's here. So I just wanted to give her a shout out. Um, but of course, yes, thanks to everyone who came, both um, staff and teachers and, and everybody in town who was able to drive through because it was a nice, a nice boost for everyone, I think. So thank you. My um, kids want to do that weekly. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it for board comments. Um, Dr. Metzler, turning this over to you for the consent agenda. Excellent. Well, first, um, you know, the personnel report. So um, I, I can't sing her praises enough. Obviously, Karen Gallagher, once again, our special education director, um, has found us an excellent special education teacher with, with Principal Collins. Uh, Catherine McKay. Um, so it's my pleasure to ask you to um, for a motion to accept um, her nomination uh, to come work for us here in Hampstead. Very fortunate, um, great educator. Uh, happy to have her. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you have had an opportunity to look at her her materials. Um, she's impressive. So um, we look look forward to that nomination, please. I'm gonna call for that vote. I don't have it in front of me, so hold on, sorry. Okay, can I have a motion to, um, Catherine I'm not organized. Sorry, I'm missing stuff. It's Catherine um, Hampstead Central School Special Educator. Perfect. Melissa, you got that? Yes, I do. Can I have a motion? Special Education, so Catherine moved. McKay, Central School, I'm sorry. So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Melissa, will you please call a roll vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Carnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. And Mrs. Yusenka? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I apologize for not having 
what I need in front of me. Um, okay, Dr. Metzler, um, superintendent report. Great. And uh, congratulations, uh, Catherine McKay. Welcome to Hampton. Um, staying with special ed, uh, I received a notification from the Department of Education today. Again, Karen Gallagher. Um, we have a, a written finding of non-compliance report for the 2019-2020 school year. Once again, uh, Karen Gallagher and her team of people uh, got 100%. So that what that means is every single evaluation was done on time and done correctly. So in complete compliance with all the regulations of the Department of Ed. So congratulations to um, uh, our special ed staff and certainly the leadership, uh, Sir Karen Gallagher and Francine Flynn and, and the rest. Great job um, as, as always, as always. Uh, secondly, moving on, um, our ESY and other summer programs, I touched on this briefly. Um, we're planning, obviously, to do them remotely if we have to, and we'll continue to uh, update you as that goes on, um, but we will be having those programs one way or another. Um, Jim Sweeney kind of jumped on this, but I, I have to say something about it as well. On, on Tuesday, April 14th, you know, the uh, pause for remote learning for the school community, um, the parade, the open house, oh, what a success, what a success. You know, I, I, I drove as well uh, in the parade and, um, you know, it, it's all these people that you, you, know, you take for granted that you see them every day and then you don't see them for a long time and then you see them in a parade and um, you're really happy and then you look over and you see your children and you, you're kind of sad because I'm like, she's in eighth grade and her experience is, is wrapping up with some of these folks and, uh, and she loves and appreciates just like all of our children do, our teachers and, and paras and other people that, and principals and other people that work in our building. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was great. So we had over 100 school staff members, 400 cars of the Hampstead school families safely participate in this fun event for a day off from remote learning. The buildings remain closed, but the parking lots, the Hampstead Central School, St. Anne's Church, Hampstead Middle School, all served as safe places for the school community to enjoy the parade and an open house. So there's many thanks to obviously the Hampstead Police Department for their help with the traffic. Uh, Father Gagney at the St. Anne's Parish for sharing their parking lot, tremendous partner of our schools. Hundreds of parents and families for taking the time to participate and of course, you know, our staff members, and let's not forget our PTSA uh, that helped prepare for the event. And certainly the experience of Principal Collins who understands the safest route and the best way to do these things. So, um, you know, he was kind of the, uh, you know, the grand poopa of the, uh, the parade, I guess, and uh, in lots of ways. But no, they, they did a, a really, really tremendous job uh, to do that safely. So it's, um, it's provided us inspiration and certainly um, ideas for if we need to do more remote things, celebrate more remotely, we, we have some ideas that, uh, that may be helpful moving forward. So um, at this point, I think that's all I have for a report. Um, oh, one more thing, I'm sorry, in your packets, uh, or at least Caitlin, you have uh, what we call the, the general assurances uh, that will require signatures at some point. So if the board has an opportunity to review those, um, and then we can do DocuSign to get those signatures in. My, my signature will go on electronically after yours. So. Um, it's a long document. I'm certainly not going to take up any more time of your meeting, but uh, have an opportunity to review that. And when you're comfortable, just get that back to Kathy Belcher. She'll get those signatures and get that general assurances form into the Department of Ed. Okay? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. That's all. And, uh, and, and then, Jeff, with um, you know, your review and approval of the finance documents, if there are any. Yes, I think I saw an email come through that Jeff sent us um, that we can all use to, to docu-sign those. So, um, so board members, please take a look and get those signed. And thank don't you, be a delinquent. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. No, no thank you very much. That's all. I, don't be a delinquent, is that what you're saying? No, I was calling myself a delinquent because I reminded everybody to sign and send in the ethics form at the last meeting. And then Melissa had to chase me down because I forgot to send it to her. So I'm saying, <laughs> don't be a delinquent like me. <laughs> I signed it while we were having the meeting and then forgot to send it. So, but thank you for Melissa for keeping me on track. <laughs> thank um, you. Yeah. And um, Kathy Belcher did send everybody the general assurances. So um, I just want to clarify they're not, I don't think they're in the packet, but she sent it a little while ago. So take a look, read through it. It is long and not super interesting. Um, I think, Dr. Metzler, I'm the only one who has to sign that, although the board should, board members should tell me if they have an issue with it, but I think I'm the only one who has to sign. Right. We get a chance to right. look at it. Yep. I could be wrong. Everybody look at it. If you need, if we all need to sign it, then sign it. Um, 
Okay. Nice background, Dave. Oh, he's traveling around to like different mountains. It was snow covered before. Okay. I don't think we have any other business or old business unless someone has anything they want to bring forward. No, okay. So we are gonna go, I'm gonna ask for a non-public and I'm gonna ask to go into non-public under 91A colon three C, which is reputation personnel and also L um, for legal advice. So I can give an update there as well. Can I have a motion? So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, Melissa, can you please call a roll vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Sorry, I didn't hear anything from Mr. Smith. Can you do a, a thumbs up, please, if you're saying yes? Thank you. I see a thumbs up. And Mrs. Yasenka? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries to enter and non public. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll be going into non public. I don't think we're going to have a need to come back, but if people want to hang out, I guess you can. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.